Today I'm getting on with MX-5 bits and pieces because to be honest, at last, the Volvo is running pretty bloody good. I mean, the rev limit is still six and a half, which is lower than uh, I'd like. And the spool is still, well, the power band starts at like near enough four and a half. So it's still a very small power band, but it's going really well. So I'm not all that fussed at the moment. So yeah, I'm just doing MX-5 bits. And the one thing I got to do is make this crank pulley, which originally was a three rib. And we, well, Thomas machined it down to two because, well, I only needed two, but now I'm not running any power steering. It's going down to one. So I'm gonna do it. I've marked where TDC was. I don't know why they just don't do that from the factory. Well, modified stuff for you, innit? But yeah, um, that's TDC. It don't really matter, I've marked it now, but I did just cause I was checking on the car first, but now I'm gonna put it in there and carefully take this down to that single rib because all it's going to be running is the alternator um i know on the you know most people see the stuff like this, like, oh yeah but you know cars the engines need uh crank dampers that's what these things at the front are but yeah no some cars more than others and these volvos these red blocks it turns out generally not really some people still say you do but a lot of people still say it don't seem to make any real difference so i'm not gonna i'm gonna see a lot of engines don't it depends not all cars have got big bloody dampers hanging off the crank pulley so yeah i mean this isn't any kind of damper anyway it's bloody aluminium the original one's a big heavy thing with rubber in it which is some form of damper, but earlier red blocks didn't have any, any damper at all. And they're still alive. So, yeah, it's one of them really. But I'm choosing no. So I'm gonna put it in here and leave it out. that finished I'm leaving it slightly thicker on the outside just because that's the side is likely to get the odd knock and stuff I'd rather it survive than take another couple of mil off so and to be honest it's just going through to the threads so that's probably a good time to stop anyway but it's plenty smooth you could carry on and on and on to get it super perfect but for this application, nah, I'm here all day. So yeah, happy days, let's just get it off. So yeah, you see look, it's slightly thicker on the front than the rear, which I think I'd prefer for strength, to be honest. Um, it's smooth, it's not as perfect as the back side, but it's more than good enough for what I want to do. So, um, I call that done. 
Look at the mess it makes. It looks like decoration, but it's pretty sharp and nasty. <sighs> Tinsel, it might look like, but it ain't. It's a bloody mess. <sighs> After, well, far too long dicking about of other stuff, I got right on with the MX-5's Volvo Penta 2.5 litre engine. That's going in very shortly. Um, obviously it's been built for ages now, but it's just sort of sat there with no cam belt on, no accessories on, blah, blah, blah. So I've basically got on with it today. As you would have seen in the other footage, I machined down this to a single rib I've put the cam trigger on, the time, you know, the trigger wheel. Cam belt is all on and timed up. Um, alternator's on with the small bracket, as in not the one with the air con and stuff like most Volvos have. But any Volvo Red Block people would probably know these pulleys are normally double, so bigger, heavier things. Uh, they're usually two and two and three, and then you've got the aircon one. On very few red blocks, it even uses all those pulleys, but they're fitted as standard. But I've gone down, thanks to having those boat engines, which came with single pulleys and stuff, and modifying this one, I've managed to make it single alternator, single water pump, and single crank, which, well, it's neater, it's tidier, and it saves some weight, so winner. Um, what else have I done? Obviously, new cam belt, new tensioner, all that stuff, so all good. Um, I need to, I still need to torque the head studs, but like a Wally, I misplaced the um, torque settings. They're on a piece of paper, so that's, you know, that's waiting. I'll do that another day. Um, thing I still need to figure out is oil. On my 940, I have no oil cooling at all. It is filter straight on there, done. You know, and, and it's okay like that, but on this one, I would rather, I don't even know what the oil temps are on my 940, that's the trouble. It's, it's, it's not dyed, but I don't know what the temps are. They could be way too hot, they could be fine, I don't know. I don't care enough about that car to, to check. This one on the other hand, I do care about. So I want the oil temps to be correct. And what I mean by correct isn't chuck a big fucking oil cooler on it, because one thing that most people don't realise, but I've got first hand experience of from a number of times is a lot of cars with aftermarket oil coolers are in fact just over cooling their fucking oil and that's worse than under cooling it that's worse than it overheating um the reason being because people will say well no because I've got um a thermostat in mine uh don't make much difference these thermostats for oil coolers don't completely block the oil supply they slow it down a bit that's all but on this car i have no fucking idea but i mean there's two ways to look at that if you've got no idea you could always fit one or not fit one make a guess and then see what your oil temps are saying and modify it from there that's, yeah, you can do that, but it's a fucking, it's a, it's a guess. And it's annoying because you then have to change shit. So, what I would like to do, ideally, is to run more of a OEM setup where it's a water-cooled oil cooler. Because, although that's not as effective at getting rid of the heat, as a totally separate air-cooled one because 
the water it's using is the water from the engine, which is already at fucking, you know, 85 degrees generally. What they are is more like an, a temperature stabilizer. They're not an oil cooler. They're an oil temperature stabilizer. So it will try and get it as equal to the water temp as possible. And that works both ways, which is why I like them. Because A, it tries to keep it at 85 odd degrees, which is fine for oil. And B, it warms it up to 85 degrees as soon as it can. Which is fucking good because I honestly think more people damage their engines from ragging their car with undercooled, under temperature oil, as in overcooled, as in ragging it before it's hot enough than people damaging it with overheated oil. Generally, what I say is, is above 70 degrees Celsius, that, as in oil temp, that is warm enough to use the car fully hard. Thing is, most people ain't got oil temp gauges. They've just got water temp. And even if your water temp is at 85 degrees, your oil temp rarely gets to the same temperature anywhere near as fast. So generally, if you haven't got an oil temp gauge, I, you know, I say wait for the water temp to be fully up and then give it another five minutes. Because honestly, oil temp takes longer to get up than most people realize. But with a water to oil um, heat exchanger, which is my preferred option. It tends to a bit more evenly, which is good. You've got a better idea and so on. So that's what I'd like. The trouble is I can't really make a decision on that until this is in the car. I need to know. I mean, the engine mount goes here and it's the turbo and the wastegate and the downpipe is where it's tricky because on that side of the engine, there's a lot less room. Other side of the engine, all the room in the world. This side, not so much. Um, as standard, like 740s, 940s, whatever, they've got like um, a funny elbow piece off here that goes, I think it's this way, this way, to clear, I think it's to clear the turbo, the oil lines, I think. But it's like an elbow piece. Then uh, a water to oil exchanger thing, like I talked about, and then the filter there. That won't work on this because I think it's the downpipe. I think there's not going to be enough room for the downpipe if I have the oil shit there. Um, I could probably have a filter direct on with no cooling. Like I have on the 940, but I don't honestly believe that will work. As in overall, you know, it, it, it might be okay. But I think the way this car is going to be making quite a lot of power and be used pretty fucking hard. I'd rather it have a more sensible oil temperature. Um, I could run a like um, a remote filter setup where this is just a, a blanking plate with an inlet and outlet. And it goes to wherever where the filter can be and usually to an oil cooler. But I really would rather not have an external oil cooler like an, uh, you know, oil to air one and to be honest i'd rather just not have the fucking about of that but i honestly won't know until it's in the car unfortunately i'll show you the standard bits because i've got them here because i've been trying to figure it out but i've come to the conclusion i haven't got a clue until it's in the car this is a standard extension bit though and it normally goes if i remember right like that roughly like that and then you've got the thing there and the filter there so I mean this could go 360 degrees but where it would be where it would clear things I don't know I reckon maybe like that because there's no alternator here anymore that is where the um, engine mount will be so that might work but that will depend on turbo position because I'm going to be using a link pipe and it means not only does the turbo have to fit and the link pipe has to fit, but the oil return 
which has to be go back to the sump because on turbo cars it normally goes to there but and drill in the block for that um so yeah if this works happy days i genuinely have no idea if it will until it's in the car unfortunately this is the original bloody heavy to be fair um water to oil cooler water goes in and out there it's a typical cooler inside oil goes through there done it's compact it's good and this one i mean i'm kind of not surprised because everything on these fucking volvos have been like good quality but it's actually i don't know if you can read the writing let me see if i can Hang on, maybe turn it off. But it's made by Modine. It's a proper fucking Modine heat exchanger. Modine is like pretty much the top brand that you can get of these kind of things. Oil to water heat exchangers, Modine are like the bollocks. So the fact that these ones are Modine generally would suggest this is actually fucking good. But again, this can go straight on the block and then a filter would go on top of it. Will that clear everything? I don't know. It'll clear the engine mount. It'll clear the downpipe. Will it clear the turbo stuff? I don't know. I have no idea. And then the water pipes can go to wherever because again, this can be rotated 360 degrees. I would love it for this to work. So straight on like that, filter there done whether it really can go like that i i'm not going to know until it's in the car unfortunately because we need to lay everything out back at the workshop and the engine is finally well apart from the sump still got to do the sump but finally buttoned up i got the torque values for the head studs and i've done all that Still need to loosen them off and re torque them once the car's got up to temp once. But on this car, it's so easy to do, it don't matter. Done that, and I had to get the wire wheel and clean up 10 cam cover bolts, nuts, studs, whatever you want to call these bloody things. Um, because, well, they look like that, so you've got to use the right ones, really. Otherwise, it just look a bit shit. And yeah, they were just old and rusty and crap. I've got loads of them, but obviously none of them are pretty. So, some wire wheel action, and they're all good. And now, yeah, it's, it's buttoned up and ready to go. Um, before it goes into the car, realistically, just the sump, I think. Anything else, well, the sump, the flywheel, clutch. Anything else needs to be done as in the manifolds and things like the breather system and so on needs to be done once in the car because obviously you need to work out where things are going to sit but the things that need doing are done and that's quite a good big step one big job which isn't a big job but it's a big part is done and that is the front subframe steering and suspension is now bolted back to the MX-5. I'll have to loosen the steering rack, I think, to get the column back on. There was no way I could, you know, I didn't have enough hands to manage all that at once. The main thing was just trying to get it back on the bloody subframe. But that's easy. That's no problem. i got to do the brakes. But from reading up in all honesty it seems standard 1.6 size discs and calipers with really good pads are fine and kind of for me at least the big draw there isn't just because it won't cost me much money because i've already got them but i better refurbish them because they they ain't pretty um the big draw is their light and especially on the front of the car it's unsprung mass so uh and rotating mass as well which makes it worse unsprung 
is way more important to lose the weight on than sprung mass. So unsprung is stuff bolted to your hubs, basically. And rotating unsprung mass, as in your wheels and your brakes, have the most effect of all. So the fact that they always say, even on track, standard 1.6 disc and calipers just with really good pads seem to work fine. Yeah, that suits me, you know, just fine. Because this car is not going to be that much of a track car. Drift car, yeah. Road car, yeah. Track car, I was... I'm sure, it, you know, it will see the track. But it's not, I'm not entering fucking time attack in it. And, uh, you know, I don't like slowing down anyway. Another thing I want to do, I know I haven't mentioned it yet. But I don't like pop-up headlights. I know I lost why people buy certain cars. A lot of people buy, you know, oh, you know, I want that because it's got pop-up headlights and they're cool. I don't like, I don't think they're cool. I've never liked them on any car. So, and on these, they just look weird. It looks like a frog. I don't know. Not not me. Uh, you've got a few options with these. You can have, like, uh, pop-ups that kind of, they're low-profile pop-ups. They go about halfway, and it's like a uh, rectangle light. They look quite smart. And you can get ones that are fixed, so they're always down. It's a totally different setup, basically. And uh, I've seen two versions. One from Japan, which looks really good, but honestly will end up costing about a grand delivered by the looks of it. It's ridiculous money. And there's another one by, uh, what are they called? Jazz Performance, possibly? J-A-S-S. They sell a lot of MX-5 stuff. All seems real good quality. They do a set, which I'm not as... I don't like the style quite as much as the Japanese one. But when I've seen it on black cars, and this car's highly likely to be black, as you can tell by the engine bay, it does look really good. So I'm very tempted to buy them. As much as I don't like spending money lately because I'm a bit skint, they're only like, I think about £300. So it's, yeah, no. And it saves like, a tiny bit of weight because look these weigh nothing these are like, you can't i can't lie and make out it's some kind of weight saving because you'll probably save like two kilos you don't need the motors and all of this crap it's there's less to it but honestly i just kind of want to do it because i don't like pop-up headlights and i know it's the opposite of what a lot of people you know a lot of people have to have pop-up headlights it's cool but nah i don't know but anyway, that's not important. This car is mostly about performance, so uh, I worry about that when time comes. I was going to kind of give up earlier with this for the day, but I thought, well, I'm on a bit of a roll, so fuck it, I'm going to get on with it. So, anti-roll bar is now bolted up. That's far more work than any other anti-roll bar I've ever had to do up. Not because it's complicated, it's literally two bolts either side. But because of these new bushes, and they're a very, very snug fit to say the least, I had to use a trolley jack to sort of force the bloody ARB to be in the right place. And then I had to use some massive mole grips to literally squash the bracket down to the correct shape because the big fat bushes were literally, you know, forcing out of shape, which meant you couldn't get any bolts in. So a hell of a lot of fiddling about, and that's done. Other end of the scale, I put the steering rack into the column, which involved basically um, undoing the rack mounts so I could move it back to get it in. And while that was about the hardest one I've ever done, that was about the easiest. This literally, it just, I, I loosened those two, undid those two, it just went poop, straight in. Beautiful. So, yeah, I will show you. It's a big moment, this is. The car has fucking steering. Quite a lot of lock as well. Yeah. Awesome. These cars haven't got much lock as standard. 
but um, it has got plenty now. So yeah, um, the observant among you may have already noticed front bumpers on, not on on, it is just placed on. And the reason is, I'm gonna get choppy choppy with it. Um, you might have possibly, I can't remember, if not, I will put a link. But anyway, if you look at my old videos, I used to have a Cosworth engine, one of these, a white one with a Ford YV Cosy engine, gearbox and rear diff. And the stupid regret of selling that bloody thing is the whole reason I'm building this. I should have just kept it and then I wouldn't need to have none of this shit and <laughs> the job done. Because that thing was awesome. But I listened to a really fucking... Glass is half empty, grumpy bastard, mate. It was also a really good mechanic, but he was also like just the most downer person I've ever met. And um, his, oh, I would just sell it in case it goes wrong. Uh, 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 made me think, fuck it, I'm going to sell it. And it was a terrible decision. And that's why I'm making this. But one thing I learned from that car, because I bought it already converted, but it was terrible, as in... It was slower than a standard Cosworth, even though it should have been about 60 brake up. And part of that, <laughs> part of the reason, I mean, it was a lot of it was just because the owner and potentially the builders of the car were clueless. But one of the reasons was there was literally no airflow into the, under the bonnet. Nothing to the intercooler, zero. Because it was just a standard front bumper. And what I did to that car I, it was ugly as shit, but I cut what I called a letterbox. I literally cut a fucking rectangle out the front, which uh, fed air to the cooler, and literally that alone, honest to God, felt like it added 30 brake, because <laughs> finally the cooler could do something. Um, so yeah, that was one thing I did, and another thing I did, which helped it helped the aero more than anything, but it helped the cooling as well. Was thing is, what goes in, it's got to come out. So you can have all the airflow, you know, an open front bumper, all you like. But if the air is then trapped under the bonnet, there is no flow. It's same with engines with, you know, compressor flow, turbine flow. You need them both. And it's no different with, you know, airflow anywhere. So if none can get out, none can go in, no matter how open it is. So once I added some bonnet vents, very carefully placed bonnet vents, not just fucking slapped on, they were it was mostly the ones that was behind behind the radiator in, in the cooler, really. So near the front of the engine bay, which if you look at nearly all race cars with vented bonnets, they have got a vent there because that is the most important place. So yeah, in front of the engine, but behind the coolers, once I did that, A, it was about a million times more stable at high speed because before it used to be like quite unstable above about 100. Once that was done, honest, honestly, the car was stable at 160 miles an hour. It was brilliant. Um, but it also helped cooling, of course. So now, as soon as I'm on a roll and whatever, I'm going to add some cooling to the front. And I think I'm going to do that. The slightly less ugly way, but again, it's still something people, oh, it's horrible, but I don't give a fuck, it's functional. I'm going to cut lots of circular holes to let the air in, big ones, along there. Basically, the line, the ideal line, because there's like a crash panel thing above it, well, a front, front panel, which I don't really want to remove because it's probably got some sort of chassis stiffness thing. It, would, it should out that by the looks of it, so I'm going to leave that, I think. But from about there down, it's open. So some big holes along that line should do it nicely. Uh, I don't reckon I'm going to add any more. <sighs> don't know. Don't know. I might just get, I'll probably get carried away and it'll be fucking Swiss cheese to fuck. But you'll see in about, uh, well... In a moment, because I can't be bothered to film it, but uh, you'll see the result in a second. And literally two minutes later, done. 
Um, that's a lot less. It looks like a fucking moustache. It looks like a smiley man with big eyes and a fucking moustache. It looks like it's got one of those skinny moustaches like Freddie Mercury or Adam LZ or some kind of 80s gay man would have. Anyway, <laughs> looks quite funny. But yeah, it's better than that ugly ass letterbox I did on the uh, Cosy Engine one. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's still not to many people's taste, but frankly, I didn't buy them an MX-5 because I like what they look like, because I don't. I buy, you know, I own them because I really love how they drive. I do not, I'm not a fan of what MX-5s look like. You know, it's just not. It's bloody MX-5. They just drive awesome. But yeah, I, um, I prefer it now. Nine, uh, I think it's 90, 90 mil holes, three inch. Basically the biggest hole saw I had. Um, nine of them started at both ends. So it basically worked out to be pretty much equal. I need to vent the bonnet too. You know what? I might cut holes. I might just do circular holes in that as well because it's fucking easy. I was thinking of doing um, what I did on the Cosy engine one is I did like on Manta 400 and a Skona 400 and so on Group B rally cars. They had like triangle shaped like a strip, you know, sort of a, imagine like a, a rectangle like that, but sectioned up into um, triangles. So half the triangles facing up, half the triangles facing down, vents like that. Uh, I cut into the bonnet and it looked really good and it worked. And it's quite simple, but you know what's simpler than cutting triangles? Cutting circles with a fucking hole saw. <laughs> about here basically it needs to be in front of the engine and the engine ends just before the anti-roll bar in front of the engine but behind the radiators well behind the intercooler so yeah somewhere around there because the thing is what's worth a mention is because this is being used will be used as a drift car a lot when you're drifting, the typical front or airflow type shit doesn't work the same for cooling. I mean, for example, my black C230 compressor. With the standard intercooler setup, but running like one bar boost on a supercharger, in a straight line, even if I literally did a full pull from like 30 to 140 miles an hour, the intake temps would stay stable. They would stay under 40 degrees. They would have no problem, you know, as it was. But drifting on track and not going slow, I'm talking like, uh, you know, third gear stuff, the intake temps would go to like 80, 90 degrees with the standard intercooler, like within not even a lap. It was insane. And they were, like I said, you wouldn't even get 40 doing a real long high speed run in a straight line and what solved that was a bigger intercooler i didn't change the aerodynamics on that apart from well i did a little bit i did a bit of ducting and stuff but it's mostly uh a big intercooler so yeah you can't rely you can't think oh you know my car's fine in a straight you know my car never overheats even top speed in it. it's like yeah it's a different story to uh sideways all the time so you're just gonna give it a hand and this will give it a hand simple as that 10 minutes later and the bonnet is done i'm not a massive fan of how it looks but considering it's going to be black you only want to see it to be perfectly honest it's going to be sat in black this car the main thing is it's in the right place because and I will show you through the holes, hopefully. It's in front of the anti-roll bar, which means it's in front of the engine. But it's as far back as I can, really, before the engine. The reason being, I'm not 100% on that, but um, on MX-5 generally, 
they often have pissy little intercoolers in the front bumper and that's because there isn't much room for anything else but for the intercooler i want it's not going to be right at the front it's going to be kind of where the standard radiator goes it's uh you know behind the uh the front you know crash structure or whatever bloody hell you want to call it so the radiator is probably along this line so the vents have to be behind it otherwise it's pretty pointless and to be honest it would look better the vents would look better if they were here somewhere but then they wouldn't work and i'm not doing it for looks you know if i was doing it for looks i wouldn't be cutting fucking circles in the bonnet i'm doing it because <laughs> it's is needed and that's from experience as well that's not just so oh i think it's needed that's from me doing this in the past already and knowing what works when i did it on the cosy one they were a little bit further forward if i remember right i can't remember but that was because the intercooler was pretty much in the bumper this time it ain't the intercooler is well like i said it's i'm not 100 percent, but i I'm fairly sure it's going to be about there. I mean, if something changes and the intercooler ends up much further forward, I would be tempted to do a second row because, well, because more chance of the air getting out. And, you know, that isn't, that isn't like the biggest vent in the world, just five, three-inch holes. But as it is, yeah, it works, function over form. And although people will be like, oh, I don't like that, probably, fuck no, don't care. A, you should know me by now, I couldn't care less what anyone thinks. <laughs> and B, I don't really like how it looks. I'm doing it because it's needed. So, done, do you know what I mean? And C, when it's sat in black, you don't even see this. I mean, it's just a sat in black versus a black hole. No, it's not like I'm going to have it in like big shiny mesh or anything like that. I don't think I'll have any mesh. It'll just be holes. So black holes on a black bodywork. You ain't going to see it. So <laughs> there you go. Also, I just thought I'd add, while this totally goes against everything I've ever fucking said on videos and what I said earlier on, now I've... Um, made the front well i've added the speed holes although i didn't do it for looks it's kind of made it less of a gay looking red car and a i quite like the red and b i quite like the pop of headlamps i think maybe now i don't want to keep those i don't know i'm not sure about keeping those pop-ups but i might get those low profile ones because it kind of looks good I don't know. Can't decide. The red kind of looks good, but the red is fucked on this. I mean, like, bad. And, yeah, probably satin black will look better. Hmm. Don't know. But, yeah, that's, that's annoyed me now. I don't like pop-up headlights, but suddenly the holes make it look a bit less, a bit less fruity. Don't know. It's not, it's like, they don't even look, I don't think they look good, but it makes it look less girly. <laughs> so they, they're not as noticeable. So I think maybe them low profile pop-up headlights would be a good look. I just, I'm trying to imagine this with those um, flush ones, and I'm not sure if it'll look right. You know, the non-pop-ups. It would have, it certainly would look right when I saw it with the standard bonnet and bumper, but now like this, it almost seems like it suits it. Oh, I don't even know. And yeah, you could give your opinions in the comments, but you should know me by now. I won't pay any attention. Well, I will listen to them and com and uh, and you know read them and reply, but I don't tend to do anything anyone tells me to, so <laughs> it won't make any difference in that way. But, yeah, it does look all right in red. Now I've sort of degayed it. But no, it's got to be black. 
But yeah, I'm not sure what I'm doing about headlights. Hmm. I'd rather not spend the 300 odd quid they cost, but because I ain't got much money. But I must admit, they bugged me enough that it'd be 300 quid well spent, I think. So, I don't know. We will see. Almost looks like an FD from here. It really isn't. I wish it was. I know I love Rover Red Blocks, but I'd much rather this be a 13B with a big turbo. Anyway, I'm going to go. See you later.